It's a tail that reaches all the way from the Arctic to the tip of South America. These are the wintering grounds for the little red knot. Tierra del Fuego is a land of extremes. The wind can scour the landscape at 80 miles an hour. For three months each year, a special population of red knot called Rufa makes this their home. They're about the size of a robin and they weigh less than an apple. Here in Chile, they survive on tiny mussels which they eat whole. They spend much of their days feeding. They need the calories because they're in the process of molting new flight feathers for their extraordinary migration. The process takes about three months and a tremendous amount of energy. On this exposed landscape, small birds are easy prey. The red knots flock with other species, their safety in numbers. With one eye almost always open, someone's bound to spot the falcon or the fox. Even in flight, they stick together to confuse the predators. It's as if the flock has a single mind. But recently, the red knot has fallen prey to something far more menacing than a fox. The population has started to crash. For over two decades, Guy Morrison has been conducting aerial counts. He's witnessed one of the most rapid declines of birds ever recorded. In the last five years, red knot numbers have dropped by nearly 70%. It's late in the season, and the knots will set off for the Arctic soon. Their long migration is crucial because the Arctic is where they mate and hatch their young. They'll be flying nearly 20,000 miles round trip. It's an astonishing journey. Hold a bird in your hand and you, you, you get a sense of what duking it out every day for your survival means. I can't even imagine the flights these birds have to take, taking off for a trip across the Atlantic, flying for three or four days straight. It's extraordinary. It's now February, and the knots have a last chance to fatten up. They've molted new flight feathers, which need to be carefully preened for their long migration. And then, one day, when the wind is right, a flock lifts off as if by magic and begins the first leg of its long journey north. They'll spend the next three months hopping up the coast of South America, fattening up as they go. Once they reach Brazil, they'll rest and prepare for the longest leg of their epic migration. Mm -hmm. 